Welcome back to Tug's Trains. I'm in between big videos right now, so I figured it was a good time to give you all an update on the model fleet. Today we'll be taking a look at two engines instead of one. Everyone's favorite little western duo, Duck and Oliver. We'll start with Duck. I built Duck long before Oliver. You would think Duck would be a very easy character to make. His basis is real and mass-produced in 00 scale. He wears a real-life livery. He even wears a real-life number. But of course, Duck wasn't all that simple. At least, not for me anyways. So Duck is a Great Western Railway 5700 class pannier tank engine, as stated by Audrey himself. A pretty common engine, one that Bachman has made forever, and still do. However, he is the version with the round cab windows instead of the square ones, which limited me a bit. I did have a 5700 model at the time, and I still do, but it has the square cab windows. So, it was a bust. Couldn't use it. I also particularly wanted a Great Western livery version of the engine, not British Railways or anything else. Specifically so, the smoke box door would not have the rectangle number plate on it. Perhaps it's different now, but back when I started making Duck, I could not, for the life of me, find this specific version of the 5700 for a decent price. Like Bachman's Ginty models, I think the panniers sell out very quickly because people salvage their chassis for kit bashes. So finding a decent duck was kind of difficult. So I had to get crafty. Bachman repurposed the tooling for their 5700 body from Mainline, a company they bought out years ago, and they changed very little of the body over the years. I found a used one on Hatton's for a very cheap price in the livery I wanted, so I went for it. I figured I could reuse the newer chassis from my other 5700 with the square windows. Thankfully, the newer chassis fit under it without issue. I had a duck body now. The only issue now was the buffers. The previous owner had fitted new brass ones to the mainline body, which, in my opinion, looked too big for it. So I removed those and attempted to replace them with common sprung ones from Bachman. I had to craft new square buffer housings for them, which at the time I didn't have much, so I just used card. If you look closely at the model now, you can tell it's card. Definitely something I'd like to update in the future. So I finally had the model, and I was very happy with it. Time for painting. Just like every other model, I primed the body and then painted it with coats of matte acrylic. I decided to be a bit more liberal with my color choice here. I'm not the biggest fan of Great Western Brunswick Green. It's very drab and dark in my opinion. And that's fine for an accurate real life model of course. But Duck's color was a lot more vibrant in the original books. It's a very different green to the standard one like on Percy and Henry. It's more of a dark minty green. It's a very attractive color. So I wanted to replicate that on my model. So I used a shade called Blue Green Deep by Blick. Lettering was the next step. The GWR and number transfers are gold water slide ones from Model Master. The last thing was the number plate on the cab sides. Duck's number plate in the books is real, 5741. An actual pannier wore this in real life. Until I could get something more realistic looking, I opted to print out the number on card, similar to what I used before for Gordon and Spencer's nameplates. And for a while, this is what my duck wore. Some real coal in the bunker, and some light weathering, and Duck was complete. He is missing one feature that I don't think I'm going to add, and those are his signature sandboxes. For some reason, and I have no idea why, Duck was illustrated with rectangular sandboxes on his front above the running board, a feature that is not present on any 5700 panniers. 5700s have the sandboxes under the running board, in front of the wheels. I don't know why these were added to Duck in the books and in the show, but since this is my AU, I prefer him to just not have them. He was accurately illustrated without them in Stepney's book, so there you go. Good enough for me. Alright, on to Oliver. My Oliver came much later, and he was an insanely easy model to make. I didn't have to jump through hoops to find his basis like Duck. Unlike Duck, Oliver is a 1400 Great Western Auto Tank, 
thankfully a class with very few differences between models. What I originally wanted to do, and what I would still like to use, was use a DJ Models 1400. However, DJ went out of business a few years ago, and the 1400 was never re-released. So they are very hard to find now, and go for a pretty penny. I very fortunately have one of my own, but I prefer to just kind of keep that as is. I wasn't about to use what is now a precious, rare engine for Oliver. So I went with the next best option, an older Hornby 1400. I found one for a cheap price on eBay, in the United States, surprisingly, and went to work. I primed the boy, and painted him in the same minty green as Duck. I picked out the rims of his cab windows and his singular boiler band in gold, and his smoke box fittings with silver. Like Duck, his tank emblem is a water slide transfer from Model Master. I did actually consider giving Oliver the same GWR lettering on his tanks to match Duck, just to be different, but ultimately decided to be accurate to the books. To lift the old model's tooling a bit, I sanded down the handrails that were a part of the body mold on the cab sides, and added actual handrails. I added some knobs and wire, and cut them all to size. Really makes a difference, I think. So, I was going to use a card number plate for him just like I did for Duck. However, the model-making gods smiled upon us, and Fox Transfers gave us a wonderful gift. Actual etched brass number plates that you can just buy. I don't know how this is possible, but Fox Transfers offers the real-life number plates for Duck and Oliver specifically. That's 5741 and 1436, respectively. I'm serious. You can just go to their site and order Duck and Oliver's number plates. This just blows my mind. Me thinks someone at Fox Transfers is a secret Thomas fan. They know what their audience wants. I ordered those plates, and they just look spectacular. So much better than card. Well, this is kind of a disappointment. Um, seems like Oliver is, uh, is dead. He died. <laughs> I know the Hornby 1400s are kind of crap runners, so this isn't a total surprise, but... Damn. Guess Oliver needs a new chassis now. Great. And well, folks, that's Duck and Oliver. I love the color of these two, but I think they are both due for a redo at some point. I want to redo Duck with better buffer housings, and Oliver in general just needs a new chassis now. But for the moment, I think they both look good. They definitely add a nice variance of color to the fleet. Also, since we're here, I figured I'd give you an update on how Donald and Douglas are coming along. I haven't had as much time as I would have liked to devote to completing these guys, but I have started Donald. I removed his Westinghouse pump on the side and filled all those excess holes in. He is going to be in Northwestern blue, just like in the books. His main coat is down, and it needs to be cleaned up a little bit more, and he still needs lining and lettering. Douglas, however, is still untouched. I initially wanted to paint both in blue, just like in the books. But the more I think about it, the more I kind of want to paint Douglas in BR black, to have a representation of both liveries the twins wore in the series, and also, just to be different. Never seen anyone do one twin in one livery, and one in the other together. What do you all think? I might change my mind on that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. That's all for this Tug's Trains, folks. Pretty quick and easy one this time around. Hope you all enjoyed it. See y'all in the next one.